studying every stone that comes at me in order to grind down understanding and knowing that I have been favored by an archangel and the king and the savior and even Xerxes who hangs on the tree of Judah with the poor of the land in the law with the book Xerxes the hangman the whore was money who had made money off of the hangman who hanged himself still after still in the name of Xerxes quite possibly but take for note the iniquity of all of those poor churches other lands that have already turned their land dry and desolate that come in called Caesar the whore. Caesar the whore that has no king. He is unseen by God unless the, unless the one who is anointed speaks it and God understands what is taking place and going on in the world. Caesar who has no king and the woman in Caesar strip clubs that have no king, the prostitute that has no holy mountain, the prostitute that cannot bow down to the Savior Jesus Christ and admit that he is the Savior of her. Those prostitutes have no holy mountain in heaven where the churches, where the courts, where the trials, the true tribulations within come. What is outside of you. That is not the judgment. That is the persecution. The judgment is a blessing. In a trial, the, the blessing of the battle, the trial to overcome whether or not the, the king, Sir Caesar, has a divination of British people with African slaves who fornicate with one another and so on through the Spanish and African and British and Muslim, they fornicate with one another and they kill themselves from that holy mountain and they they call it law or lawlessness. I call it I don't even consider it to be law, I call it lawlessness. And in fact if a president were to run a country, he would quit fooling the people with their eye and take out the word law forever so as long as Caesar has a strip club in America. Law is not a term used with Caesar. If, and this is serious shit, if a man who is with the interpretation through Gabriel, the archangel, a man who understands the Bible so man, a man who has something within and knows all things, if those foreign people with Caesar's court come in and take that name to their to a, a, a place that is destined and all of these people that in the in the American country with grassy land and the seas and all that stuff and all of these people that chose their ways and they put that man to a cross with a great multitude that is separate from all those people that don't see the backgrounds of the streets, they don't see the backgrounds of the buildings, the stalking Indians, the, the stalking Africans, the stalking British people with them in a slavery, the stalking Mexicans. They don't see that, but in that, and this is the war in the street constantly, fighting for your soul since since I was a little bit of baby. My, my mother and father divorced. I was digging in a trash can at the age of 14 years old, thrown in prison by 15 police officer families. But I don't hate none of my family members. I love them very much. I'm forced to expose them in order to keep myself safe. Understanding the sacrifice that Caesar is it's not his, it belongs to Odin. And in Odin, in exposing Odin that was turned to darkness in Caesar, still carrying the light and the gift of all of the kings of the world in the heart, put into those pools 
that have no king, they have no savior, they only have a lawless rule. Every 144,000 saint that holds close to his testimony for the Lord until they, they kill him for their only it can only be a spiritual image of pigly fleshly an elephant fleshly a salamander fleshly lizard fleshly image or a turtle flesh image with wisdom and knowledge and then they deep it and create their own rule books their own law books their own inventions they need everything is going to be saved and the Lord one day will come and I believe this is the the eight kingdom after the seven, but the same as the seven, Matthew and Jesus. Matthew is the two Jews. This is my belief in Revelation 17 and Revelation 18, the last angel to come and have great power. And they are the same. Jesus Christ has already been crossed with Matthew. And Matthew has already carried the head of King David as the true prince and the true judge of Judah, Levi, Matthew, and King David, who was a slave, a servant of John the Baptist in Judah, the place where it all began. But if they make one desolate, like it reads in Daniel 12, for a setup, and they kill this man and all these people and all these spirits, you don't even need to speak in front of the people where two or three are gathered, there is uh, Jesus Christ. It's not where a great multitude of gangs and bullies and a whore thieving from God constantly and livestock sacrifice are. It's where two or three are gathered. Jesus Christ is not. Find those people who do these things daily, sacrifice and thank glory. Speaking out of vanity by no choice in exposing because the law is lawless and a constant covet for an image of self upon them that they may get away with something through the Antichrist that doesn't see, it doesn't hear, but it has an omniscience and it's better to speak. However, the reason we speak that third eye. The omniscience that manipulates that African that sleeps with a British woman or kills it and use their soul or star or lifestyle sacrifice. It, a third eye that feeds God a bunch of foolish lies. That old woman that comes and tries to cut the truth, feeding a bunch of lies in our forehead, causing a bunch of corruption in our forehead to make God think that the world is corrupted. Uh, he can't have or establish a kingdom or a place like such corruption when a man is factually peaceful. I can name all the women I've been with, and I can name how many times I've been hogtied and taken to a mental institute that every time I've shown art or athleticism, but I can't get nothing done in the law. I can only put my faith in the damsel above, the mother of Babel above. Who is with every livestock sacrifice in this world? Every livestock sacrifice. 